<laughs> I am excited about today because I feel like, you know, we don't really learn how to do listing appointments when we first start real estate. And I feel like this is a, a system that we probably took a few years to kind of figure out so you guys can have a head start. All right, here we go. So today we're going to talk about how to win listings. We're going to do some scripts. We're going to do some stuff like that. And let's go ahead and jump in here. So what I always like to do is just like you would pre-qualify your buyers before you go to an appointment, whether uh, you're going, you know, to show their first house or whatever, you need to be doing the same thing with the sellers as well. You have to pre-qualify the sellers just like you would pre-qualify a buyer. Um, so in order to do that, what you'll want to do is as soon as you get, and we'll talk about it, you know, how to set the appointment in a minute, but um, as soon as you get the appointment and they agree to it and they say, okay, next Tuesday at two o'clock, we're going to meet. Tuesday about 12 o'clock, you need to call that seller and further, you know, ask them some more questions and you're really just calling them to confirm the appointment, but you're going to say something just like this. Hey, it's Jeff with Cityside Properties. You know, I'm calling about our appointment at two o'clock. We're still on for two, right? And they're going to say, well, yeah, sure, man. I'll see you here. Well, before I come out, there's just a few questions I got to ask. Is now a good time? And they'll say, yeah, sure. Well, uh, just a few questions here. How did you hear about our company? Oh, well, Jeff, if you don't remember, you called me, right? Because that's most of the time how it is, right? And I say, okay, well, thank you. So this, some of this stuff you can take out if it doesn't apply to it, but I want to get through the, through the questions. So, um, so if what I make sense, if what I say today makes sense, um, and you feel very comfortable and confident that I can sell your house, are you planning on listing, me, listing your house with me today? right? And they're going to say yes or no. And depending on what they say, just go from there. If they say, yeah, if everything sounds good, I look forward to listing it. Say, okay, great. Um, if they say, well, no, we got a few others to, you know, interview. I'll say, okay, no problem. Um, <clears throat> so you do plan on interviewing more than one agent for the job of selling your home. Yes or no. You'll be very surprised how many people say, well, you know, not so far. If they say that and you're the only one listing, you need to have that listing documents prepared. You need to bring that, at least the IABS with you leave a seller's disclosure with them, uh, something like that to where you have to you know, bring them something of value. But, um, and then tell me again, where are you moving to once we sell your property? Oh, fantastic. And what's important to you about that? You know, what's important about that area or, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And a lot of them are going to, you're going to refine their motivation. Well, like I said, Jeff, we, we got to sell to get to Pearland because we're starting a new job. So, okay, perfect. And how soon do you want me to make that happen for you? And they're going to be like, well, as soon as possible. Well, fantastic. So if I say, now, if I, I mean, if I'm able to set your house in the next 30 days, that's not going to be a problem, is it? Right? Get them prepared for you. Get them saying yes. A lot of these questions are yeses. So you're going to, you know, set their mind to when you show up, they've already told you yes so many times and et cetera, et cetera. The yeses are going to come off easy, right? Um, so what would happen if, you know, if we didn't sell your, you know, if we actually didn't end up selling your house? Well, you know, I couldn't move to, you know, Pearland or whatever. And you say, oh, that sucks. I'm sorry. Uh, that's not going to happen. You're kind of, you're bringing them from the positive mindset to negative, right? And then back to positive and keep them in that frame of mind. Um, and I'm sure you, you pay attention to the market. You know, what price realistically do you think your property will sell for? Right? And they're going to tell you, well, you tell me, Jeff. That's what, that's what your job is. Some of the harder ones are. Some will say, well, I've been looking probably at least 250 or some. Remember that number. Put that 250 in your head, right? And, uh, you know, as a professional agent, um, I study homes and prices every day. Therefore, I'll assume you'll list with me, you know, at a price that will make your home sell, correct? And they're going to say yes. Okay, great. It is two things. So it has them already kind of mentally preparing themselves for, oh, I need to move to Pearland. I, I think he'll sell it within 30 days or less. He's already game right. planning with me, and so. And this is a it's a longer sheet. I mean, take take five of your favorites here, and then. But what you want to make sure you do is don't just say, "Okay, we're meeting at Tuesday at two o'clock." Do not just show up Tuesday at two o'clock. You got to pre-qualify that seller and set the appointment again, and just get them in the right frame of mind. Because when you get there, you're gonna you want to win that listing. So number ten, I never ask that, but it's, some people say, "Hey, what what price won't you go below?" Those are mostly for the distressed sellers who, you know, haven't made a mortgage payment in a few months, right? Um, how much do you owe on the property? That's another excellent question. Um, you, you always like to get that information. And what they're going to say is, I don't want to tell you that, you know, that's, you know, well, 
what I'm trying to do, seller, is, is get your, you know, your potential net. I want to make sure that 250 will net you enough money to get you to the pair land. So, uh, and we'll talk about that later. Now is not the time. But once we get a contract, you know, we'll definitely need to know what you own the property. And just, just to, um, just another question: Have you ever thought about selling your house yourself? The reason you ask that question, this should be one of your five or six most important questions, is because you'd be very surprised how many sellers will get some agents to come through their house and tell them what they're going to do to sell it and at what price to sell it. And then they'll sell it themselves. They'll use all the information you just gave them to for sell by owner to FISBO it. So if they say, well, no, I have to know, you know, I'm not ever selling this. And they say, well, yeah, I've thought about it. You say, okay, interesting. And just keep that in the back of your mind. Um, how will you help finance? How quickly? Um, yeah, this is a little lengthy for a, yeah. So we, we can shorten this up, but. The biggest thing is kind of get them in the mindset of, I'm going to be working with you. And then you know quickly if they want to overprice their house by 50,000 or if they're going to be a little difficult. You're already setting the tone for the, that meeting. Yeah, so I'm glad we're doing this. I got this from Sean Kokoska. And I don't go through every 21, 22 questions at all, but I definitely, there's never a point where I say, okay, I'm meeting you at Tuesday at two and I show up Tuesday at two without talking to them. And if I don't, and if I'm calling them and texting them and it's, it's 145, 150 and they have an answer all day, I'm not showing up. Uh, I don't think you should either, but um, quickly describe your house for me. Chances are the same reason you bought your house is really the same reason another buyer is going to buy their house, right? So or we're going to buy your house. So can you tell me what, you know, kind of why you bought your house and describe it for me? And they're going to say things that if they say things that aren't normal, like, oh, there's this huge oak tree in the back, you know, that, that was a soul. It, it provides so much shade. It's, it's just a soul. We sold us on it. Or we love these huge archways. Jot that in your mind because the second that you see them and the second they open the door and you walk in, you say, oh my goodness, these arches are, wow, that's incredible. These arches. Or man, look at that tree back there. And they're gonna be like, wow, I like this dude, right? <laughs> I like this guy. He likes the baby, he likes the arches too. I told you, right? They're not gonna think about that, but you're trying to, you know, build some rapport or whatever. Um, this is more of a distressed seller, but sometimes you are, you know, on a scale of one to ten, one being you know, bad and ten being perfect, what would you rate your house? Um, you know, if less than a ten, what would make it a ten? Um, if there's anything positive or negative that would affect the price, like what is it? So a lot of these, um, you can use this during the presentation. Also. Yeah. A lot of these, but we'll make, I've spoken with other. Okay. Yeah. That's another one. You know, if I've only spoken with you or there are, if there is any more, you know, decision makers that I'm going to have to meet with, are they going to be there today? And some people will say, well, my wife's at work, but you know, it's all up to her. I mean, you can go and present to the husband, but I would say, well, when's a, you know, when's a, a good time that your maybe your wife can be there as well. Because what they'll do is say, oh, great presentation, man. I'll talk to my wife, <laughs> right? Or I'll talk to my husband. You don't want that. You want to get there and you want to win that listing right there. So, um, but yeah, so that's, that's kind of what I'm going to go through, you know, before I go to the listing presentation. But this is very, very important, I think, because you have to pre, you're going to pre-qualify a buyer. You're not just going to pick up the phone and say, hey, can I see this house at 2.30? Yeah, man, I'll see you over there. If you're doing that, please stop. If you're, I mean, but, but qualify them. So qualify the buyers, qualify the sellers. And all of these little cheat sheets are in base camp under production and under listing. Yeah. So once you pre-qualify that seller, you're going to get to that appointment and you're going to show the listing presentation. And we'll talk about that. We should probably talk about that first, actually. Uh, Amanda, if you want to start jumping in. Uh, whoops. Let me go back here. So this is the listing presentation. Why do you keep doing that? Huh? Yeah. So let's zoom in so they can kind of see it. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So um, this is also in base camp and this, this is my cheat sheet. So our listing presentation I absolutely love and we actually just got it from the marketing department. There's like eight different templates. So pick your favorite and then our actual listing presentation is also in base camp. But what I like to do, how do you zoom in on this? Just this. I just did. Start it up on top. Anyway, so you know, a, a lot of us, all of us really, as good listing agents, do things that we forget to, to tell the sellers that we do. Like, hey, we take professional pictures and this is why, or hey, we do Matterport, or hey, we, you know, put words on the descriptions of each photo. And 
it's little things like that that really bring value that we already do, but we're not bringing to attention to the sellers. And so just making that extra 10 minutes or 15 minutes to share this is why we do it um, will help on the, just like Jeff said, in, in an absence of value, people will ask for a discount. But once you show all these different things that you're doing, yeah. people are like, wow, you're blowing my last realtor out of the water. I can't believe you're doing all this stuff. And really, there's a good chance that that other realtor was doing half of these things, but they didn't sit down and explain it to them. Or why they do it so, so so the goal of the listing presentation when you get there is to add so much value that they don't even see a chance to ask for a discount in the commission they feel almost stupid to ask for a discount like i'm i'm only paying six percent for all of this right and here's the thing like she said so many agents do a lot of this stuff but they don't tell the seller they're doing it so the seller you know fails to see the value of that specific agent. So just go through these real quick here. So my challenge for, for you is whatever you do for each listing, make a bullet point of the one thing you do and then two or three reasons of why you do it. So yep. when you're going through, you can explain that to them. So I'll just go through a few that we do yep. um, and then you can kind of get an idea of it. So one is, and you can kind of read through this as, as you go along, like, like Jeff said, kind of get them to agree on price first. I at least get a rough range. And as, if I get close, like even within 10,000 or so, or 20,000, I'll go through the whole presentation. And then after I've shown them a lot of value, I'll go back and try to renegotiate on the price. Um, one thing that we do is in-depth MLS descriptions. Everyone does that, right? But if you tell them why, and you use little words, like, like almost like mind play, it works. And so little things like um, for every photo, we, we have you know a description consistently. The reason this is so important is to compare your, when someone's online and they're comparing your house to someone else's house, they can't see from the pictures that it's real wood or that you have 18 inch tiles or that you have French whatever or something was imported. And the reason this is so important, especially nowadays with appraisers that are just doing drive-bys because of COVID-19, when I sell your house for the most amount of money in the least amount of time, I don't want to have any issues with appraisals. So every little detail that I can add to bring value is going to help. And throughout your presentation, you'll use the word value over and over. So subconsciously they're thinking, okay, she, he's investing into this. She's, she's bringing value in some way. And if it's applicable, you'll show pictures of the lifestyle. You'll go above and beyond, you'll take pictures of the neighborhood, the schools, the swimming pools, anything like that. Um, same thing with public description. We only get 500 characters. We only have a window for just a short attention span. You know, buyers are looking at 50 houses online. They have short attention spans. And so we're going to be quick. We're going to be to the point. We're going to give as much information as possible with the least amount of words. So um, again, keep saying the word value. MLS attachments are huge. Don't you guys hate it when you go to make an offer and there's no seller's disclosure uploaded or there's no forms uploaded? Um, so that's, that's so key. And that's something that a, a seller doesn't think about, a buyer doesn't think about. We do as agents. And you'll tell them as, a, as an agent and say, I want to make it as easy as possible for the buyers to make an offer once they see it. You know, once a buyer sees the property, they go, all right, let's make an offer. But, you know, i got to see the survey. Let me see where it is or let's take a look at the seller's disclosure. And let's say you don't have that survey or that seller's disclosure ready to go and you're scrambling to find it and you're trying to put it on MLS. The buyer's minds are like, oh, well, you know, what about this house we looked at the other day? This survey was, you know, that, that lot was pretty huge. They're going to start thinking. But if you have every single thing we need specifically laid out for them to make it easy as possible, that's the way you need to do it. And although we know that, and we hopefully we're doing that, the seller doesn't know we're doing that. Yeah. So we're trying to add value. Just the little things. Virtual tours are huge. We do that yeah. now, especially because people you don't you don't want everybody in your house. Yeah. If you have a really cheap, crappy house in a decent area that's going to sell really fast, maybe don't use that expense. I know if you're doing like a rental house, I wouldn't pay two or three hundred dollars for a virtual tour. Um, but if it's no. a traditional listing or a higher end one, absolutely. And the reason we do this is because on average, virtual tours get 160 percent more clicks than listings that do not. And you could even, if you're talking to an expired listing, go, unfortunately, your last agent didn't see the value in, in this marketing piece. And then tell them why it's so important. And there's two really great plays on this. One is, like I said, you're going to get 160% more clicks, engagements, and the retention is much higher. So let's say an average person is flipping through MLS and they're looking at your house. The average time is about 37 seconds. They'll stay on your listing for about a minute and a half if you have a virtual tour because we're engaged, we wanna click buttons, we wanna check it out. And another really great thing is it, it will reduce your 
your showings by 40%, which is kind of nice for you because if, if you have a listing and you're only getting four, four showings your first week when typically you would get 10 and the seller's kind of upset about why I'm only getting four showings, you can tell them, no, this is a good thing because when people go to see your house in person, they're only coming to verify what they've already seen online. Yeah, what you want to do is say it cuts down the unnecessary showings. Don't say it cuts down the showings. <laughs> they're going to be like, well, that don't make no sense to me, man. But you don't want to get your kids in the car, pack your dog up, get your grandma out of the house. Like you don't yeah. want to deal with any of that unless you know it's someone who really. Well, that's the reason. Is one, it, it, we have more interaction with the buyers when we have a virtual tour. They're on your page for longer. They're looking at the videos. They're simply coming to the house to verify what they've already seen. So what it does is it cuts down the unnecessary showing. So when you get a showing, this is what I want you to do. You're going to clean up the house. You're going to turn the lights on. You're going to put your. You're going to turn your sensi on. You're going to get all your stuff together. You're going to pack up and you're going to head out. And there's going to be a buyer that walks in and sees that, you know, the master isn't on the first floor. They're going to turn around and leave. And you're going to be like, well, they're going to be pissed at you because you brought an unnecessary showing. They, they got ready. So the reason we do virtual tours is to add an extreme amount of value. And then instead of saying what I just said, the reason we do that, say the reason I invest into virtual tours for you is to bring, you know, another stream of qualified buyers into the door. And it's really fun. We play a game with it. And once you get the virtual tour, have your sellers send it to their friends, have them post it on Facebook. And then you're also posting on Facebook, which is so interesting. Agent marketing. Oh, did you miss one? Nope. Well, the international, that's the list hub. Yeah, so I don't know if you guys know, but EXP pays for listing syndication. That's absolutely amazing for us. And so you can say, and it's free, have you heard about our international and out-of-state buyer program? So I know where we are, about 1 in 12 buyers are international right now. And so we, right now, if you put a house on MLS, We're out of state. Yes. The, about, I would say it goes out to about 125 to 150 different websites. With EXP, or because we work with a technology-based company, we'll syndicate it out to an additional 650 websites, most of which are international. So you're going to be on their local MLS. Don't be surprised if we get, you know, a cash international buyer, um, which is totally free. You don't have to click any extra buttons or pay for anything. It's awesome. Another thing that we do is agent marketing. This is something that, again, buyers and sellers are not going to be thinking about, but we as realtors are going to be thinking about, um, is we do agent to agent marketing. 86% of home sales last year involved a real estate agent. That tells me that I don't only just need to market to the public, I also need to be targeting realtors. So what we do is we target the top 20% of whatever zip code your house is in, and we're going to send that virtual tour to them. We're going to to an email blast. We're going to market those people who have had home sales in the last six months because they're going to love the opportunity to be the no, you know, the no twos, the people who know what's off market and what's coming soon. And they're going to be excited to share this off market opportunity to their clients. And that is going to be bringing us, you know, traction. Oh, thank you. Well, it's going to build momentum. So when you tell the people that you're putting all this website, you're trying to get an out of state buyer, but hey, let's just not focus on marketing your property to the general public. We already know that 86% of uh, transactions involve another realtor on the other side or a realtor at all. So what that tells me is we have to market to real estate agents as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to top 20% in your local area that have sold a property in the last six months. They're going to know about this property well before it hits the market because it's, we're just going to build that momentum. And the second it hits that market, all these agents who, who do, do a few business uh, in your area are going to be reaching out their buyers and we're hopefully going to get slammed with offers uh, you know, right off the bat. And you can really easily do that. Pull the last six months or year of MLS and see who has buy, you know, brought buyers or listings to the table and then just send them a quick email. It's very fast. Um, and in between, you'll go, what questions do you have? Because if you say, do you have any questions? They're going to go, no, continue. No, no, they're not going to think about it. But if you say, what questions do you have? They had to pause and really think about what questions they have and then come to the realization of, okay, we're covered, we're good. So like I said, we do international listing syndication. You can go through that on why it benefits them to work with an EXP agent. I know some builders that Jeff works with, they work with multiple agents, but they only work with EXP agents yep. because of the listing syndication. And because we as agents are sharing each other's listings, posting to Craigslist, using squeeze pages and things that most traditional. Yeah, the EXP is the most collaborative real estate you know, model out there. So I think they've realized that. So a lot of the builders, they, well, the builders I'm targeting, uh, the other listing agents are EXP agents. So. What you want to do is just remind them of the international listing syndication that you invest in for them, right? 
you're going to want to remind them of, of AdWorks. So AdWorks is something that is pretty neat. Um, I wouldn't, I think this is just maybe for us, but um, AdWorks targets um, anybody that's interested in real estate in that area, but it also targets the seller. And the reason that's important is because the seller's going to jump on their Facebook and they're going to be like, oh yeah, blah, blah, and their house is going to pop up, you know, and they're going to be like, whoa, that's pretty neat. You get to pick a target audience. So if your house has been sitting on the market for a couple of weeks, I would invest into this because they'll see that eight to eight to 10 times while they're on Facebook or Google or whatever, they'll be getting these little cookies of their house. And so they're going to assume that you're all over the market, which is really fun. And they explain in the listing process um, that there's three things that sell a property, two of which you can control, one you can't control, right? We can 100% control the marketing of your property. And it's already a proven repeatable process that we use you know, to sell, you know, a few hundred homes a year. The other thing is the presentation of the home, the condition of the home. That's something that you control, right? So you don't want to make sure it's tidy. You want to make sure it's clean and et cetera, et cetera. The thing that we cannot control that sells the property, it's only three things that do it, is the buyer's, I'm sorry, the buyer public deems as market value. That's something meaning what the buyers have already paid for properties. We can't control that, but we still, that's very important information we have to use to price your home correctly. So let them know, let them know that, yeah, right? I don't get to pick the market value. I wish I could. But every tool that you can show adds value. So the more you can demonstrate on why you do it, the more value you present and the easier it'll be to, to get your 6%. Yeah, and then at the end, a lot of people going to these listing appointments and they just talk about themselves for the first five minutes and it drives me insane. It's just not like that. You want to show them everything you do. And like she said, pick three things that you do that's a unique selling proposition that, that you do. And here's, here's another thing. Other agents may do it too, but choose three things and three reasons why you do each of those things. And that's your listing presentation. You show up, you say, well, why goodness, look at that oak tree out there. Oh honey, the oak tree, right? Uh, et cetera, et cetera. You want to tour the property. What you want to say is, Hey, I want to start from the beginning and you need to take control when you get in that listing presentation. Here's a few other tips you can do. You can start getting them to say yes to you right off the bat. Say, hey, welcome. Oh, thanks for meeting me. Hey, I'm going to put my stuff down right there. Is that okay? Yes. You want to meet at the table? Great. And then say, hey, I always like to start the, you know, the meeting by, you know, touring your house and things like that. But I always like to start at the beginning of the property to get, you know, the overall flow of it uh, through, you know, through the eyes of a buyer. Is that okay? Start walking towards the door. They're going to start following you. You're taking control of that. And then you're going to say, hey, do you mind if you kind of tore me around? I mean, I'll, I'll follow you kind of thing. Give it back to them. Give them back the control. And they're going to walk around. There's even another step you can do. About, you know, 80% through the tour before you sit down. Um, like, hey, do you mind if I grab a glass of water or a bottle of water or something? Yes. And then they've already said yes to you three or four times in person. And they've already said yes to you 16 times when you call them about the pre-qualifying the sellers. So when you do sit down, yes is in their head, right? And then you get to show all the value that you're bringing. And yes. And then show all the value, your unique selling propositions, why you do that. Um, talk about the price as well. And then at the end is when you talk about, you know, the reason you're going to sell our property and the reasons you sold other people's properties, you want to start telling them about your accolades, if any, or you can do, use third party validation. Yeah. We work with city side properties or I have an entire team or EXP realty does this EXP realty does that. Then you kind of talk about yourself. Um, and then remember that one in 10 buyers are going to be looking for information from the sign. They're going to drive by your sign. So even, for, I mean, everyone sticks a sign in the yard, but talk about it. Say we use grassroots marketing and technology. And so people are going to see the sign. We make it easy and professional where they can get my information. I always have my cell phone with me. Um, we, we use Lead Connect. You can say we do the text codes, text, you know, 123 Main Street for more information. We're going to have a, a, a property website just for your, your listing. So you can do a, squeeze, a single squeeze page like on, we showed you on KB4 just for that listing once it hits MLS. And there's a really easy lead capture that way. Um, but they're going to feel cool like their, their house gets a website. All right. So you're going to explain that value. That needs to be one of your three, you know, reasons why you sell properties at such a high level. Uh, that, that could be one of those reasons, but at the end of the presentation, even if they say, okay, well, we look forward to working with you, just like we do with a buyer, you got to ask for the sale. You got to close it. You're, you're an agent. You're not going to say, Hey, this is what we do. Okay. Let me know. Have a good day. Yeah. That's not going to work. You got to close it. So is there any other questions you have for me? You know, maybe if they're, if they are happy and they're saying yes, start setting the appointments, right? 
okay, we're going to have a, uh, a stager come out here and tell you where to kind of put things and stuff like that. When's a good time for you? Okay. And then before, after that, we're going to go, go ahead and set this schedule, go ahead and set these photos up. Uh, so we can probably have your property staged. You can probably have it ready by next Friday, right? Okay. So how does Saturday, you know, mid morning work for you as, as far as photography? Okay, great. Saturday, mid morning. Okay. Um, here's the sales disclosure. You're going to need the sales disclosure. You're going to have to fill this stuff out. Um, but I'm going to give it to you so you have plenty of time to do it. Here's the seller's disclosure. Give it to them, right? Um, so you're basically leaving with another set of appointments for them to get their property ready. There's like a, something in there. Okay. And then you're closing it. You say, I look forward to working with you, blah, blah, blah. If it's going super well, which some of them are, go ahead and get the copy of the key. So Jeff, go ahead and Jeff likes to play a game where they have to hire him. He'll do a, oh, you have a new survey? That's great. Can I go ahead and take that and I'll, yep. I'll make a copy of it? Oh, you just replaced the AC? Can I have that receipt? Yeah, do you Little have a receipt for that AC? Need. Because that's going to be huge when these buyers when these buyers start coming in. It's going to be huge. So I want to give them the AC receipt. I want to give them the survey. You have that stuff on you? And they're like, yeah, well, here, here it is, man. Let's do it. And then you have that. You know what they're not going to do? Hey, Jeff, uh, we're going to use Amanda instead. Can you give me that receipt back? <laughs> They're not going to do that crap. They're going to be like, all right, honey, we, whatever, we did it, right? So. And to say your, your photographer needs three or four days notice and go ahead and pencil them in. I mean, they're, yeah. they're already, they've already given you the key. They've already planned for the photographer to come out on Saturday. Jace asks, what if, I, what if they still have touch-ups and minor fixes and they're two weeks out? Go ahead and pencil that in. Okay, okay, great. On the 15th, you're going to be finished. On the 17th, the photographer's going to come out. Meanwhile, I'm going to either give you a, a you know, social disclosure now or you gotta give them that stuff we're and, going to sign it to you. But um, just say, great, that gives me a lot of time to pre-market your property. And right? you have an option on the listing of, listing agreement. It says you have to list it within five days. And then right under that, you can pick a different date. So you could say, okay, in two weeks on the 15th, we're going to list it. Yeah. So that's the, um, you know, jumbo lumbo stuff. Take what you want out of it, put in your listing presentation. But if your listing present isn't the same every single time, it's hard to judge the results. So make sure you have a listing presentation and make sure you go out as many appointments as you can to perfect that presentation. So let's go over um, really quick, unless there's some questions we can answer real quick. Let's just make sure. Okay. And what's, what's a weird, strange thing that we do, according to NAR statistics, the majority of buyers start looking for homes to kind of window shop over the weekend on Thursday. Thursday yeah. So if you're in the middle of the week and you're going to list a house, list it on Thursday because you'll have the most activity. And tell them that. I mean, and here's the thing with statistics. 99% of statistics are made up on the spot, right? But it, it makes you think, it makes them think you just, you know, your numbers. So here's the word, here's where you can present to the, the stats to them without necessarily misleading them. You just use the simple words up to. So you know, up, you know, up to 86% of sales last year had another agent, right? That's probably true, right? And you know, just words the word up to or something like that, right? For me, I feel like you look like the master of your business when you're saying NAR statistics, I've done my research, say Thursday's the day to list. And one out of 10 buyers is going to be a house sign and one out of 12 are going to be international. And so it really looks like you're not just sticking a sign in the yard and crossing your fingers. You've done some research. Yeah, and do it real quick. Well, these photos are great, but we need to put a description on the photos so they'll sit there and read them. You know, you know most buyers spend up to 15 seconds on photos. Whereas if you have a description, they spend up to 30 seconds on photos. Like you're just kind of saying that word up to and you're not misleading them, but you feel like you just got it going on. Anyway, so um, let's talk about some of the scripts, right? So let's let's just do this one here. Um, is Mikey on? I saw, I saw his hair. His hair, old Johnny Bravo, he probably got off. Yeah, he had a uh, he had a rep share or not rep share, but agent. Oh, share. Jace, you're up, you're up, dude. I, hey, oh, how are you, Jace? Great. Doing good. Good, man. I'm gonna run through this script for you really quick um, and just make it super easy on me so they can get a flow of what I'm trying to present to you. Jace. Yeah, most definitely. So you're the seller. So, hey, Jace. Other than you know taking a less commission, is there any other reason you wouldn't list with me right today? No, I, th I think that's it. That's really it. Okay, well, let me ask you, has there ever been a time in your life where you, you maybe paid less for something and then you kind of figured what you, you got exactly what you paid for? Has that ever happened, Jace? Yeah. Right, so I think it's like this time uh, as well. So if you don't mind, can I be kind of completely direct with you for like 30 seconds? Sure. 
Well, great. So many agents take a less commission because they really haven't been taught proper negotiating skills. So what you're doing is you're placing one of your most expensive possessions into the ha hands of another agent that has already shown you their best sales tactics and the only negotiating these skills they have is to lower a price. What, does that make sense, Jace? Uh, yeah, I guess, yeah. Right, so if they lower the price to get their, you know, you, you think if they lower the price to sell your house, you would be saving any money at all? You'd probably be losing money, right? Right, yeah. Well, I know if you're like mother sellers, you'll, you'll choose an agent like me to watch your money just as just closely as I watch mine. Okay. All we really need to do today is sign the contract so we can get you over to Pearland, something like that. So that was yep. an easier kind of script. But basically what you're doing is when they say, hey, man, I want to list with you, but I met this guy. I really liked him. They're willing to do it for 2%, right? So you can probably stop them in their tracks with uh, some Tony Robbins words. Tony Robbins, um, because usually the commission's toward the end of the presentation, right? So when Tony Robbins says, you put these words in front of those, you know, in front of these sellers or in front of these clients to stop them in their tracks. Right now, towards the end of the presentation, it's monotone to them. They're hearing you sell. You do this, you do that. They're like, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, yes, let's do it. And then you throw one of those, those words in. And let, me, let me explain it to you. So... So, hey, Jay, she told me that the only reason you wouldn't list today is, you know, because the other agent's willing to do it for 2%. Is that right? Yeah. You know, can I explain why that terrifies me? Sure. Right? And you throw that terrifying word in, and they're like, yeah, like whoa, terrifying. What, what's going on? Right? You see, Jay, has there ever been a time in your life where you paid less for something, you got what you paid for? It's kind of yeah, like that makes yeah, yeah that that it kind of snaps them back to reality, I think. Right, and it gets them out of the the flow of the meeting, and if and, and et cetera, et cetera. So that's another one. Um, thanks, Jace, for the commission. Is just let them know that it's kind of tough to put your most expensive possession in the hands of somebody who already told you and already showed you that the best negotiating tactic to get anything is to lower the price. So what if they did that same thing to sell your house? I think you'd be losing a lot more money than you'd be saving on the commission. Isn't that right? So that, that's, that's a good uh, script, and this is all going to be shared on Basecamp, so you'll have this. Um, here's a good one. It's pretty aggressive as well. Um, well, you know, you know, Jace, is there, other than, you know, your other appointments that you have today with these other realtors, you know, is there any other reason you wouldn't list with me today? I mean, I just want to see what other agents have to offer. Right. Well, um, at this point, you know, when someone says they'll listen with me, but they want to go to an additional appointment, they kind of feel obligated to the other agent. Would you say that maybe is the case here? Yeah. Right. So let me save you some time as well in starting the process ASAP so we can hopefully find a buyer and kind of get this ball rolling. So, you know, while you're waiting to be polite, there may be a buyer out there right now that's looking for this house. Wouldn't you want them to know about your house? Yeah, most definitely. Right, so let me do this, and I've done it for many of my clients. Just give me their information, I'll call the other agents, and I'll tell them, hey, I just met with you, Jace, at 123 Main, and they're actually gonna list with me, um, but thank you, if you, def if you have a buyer at 123 Main that'll buy it, you know, obviously I'll pay you 3%. All right, right. So that way, you know, Jace, I can save them, I'll save them time in preparing for the listing, even though you already said you're listing with me. I don't wanna kinda waste their time, time away from their family, et cetera, and I'll just make the call now if you prefer. Sure. That's pretty aggressive. But at the same time, I think the sellers that uh, appreciate that are, are going to do just that. They're going to appreciate that. They're gonna like, yeah, that, that makes sense, man. So kind of the, the whole thing that we're doing on the in, initial objection from the seller, like, well, I'd like to list with you, but I have other agents to interview today, is you're going to isolate that. The first word, right? Excellent. Isolate it. Why you're isolating is because you're going to let them know even in their head, the only reason you're not signing with me today is because you're meeting with other agents. Isn't that right? And they're going to say, yes. Okay. You've isolated that. So that's the only way they're not listening with you. And then you're just going to crush them with this objection handling, right? So that's another good one here. And that's a lot of, uh, that happens a lot to me as well. Um, anything? Yeah. And I think, I think Sean Kokoska says like, you know, it's better oh. to bring it up than not, you know, yeah, no, I, I try to get isolated and ask them that. Hey, well, thanks for meeting me today. I mean, uh, 
other than what you just said, like other than that or other than whatever, is there any other reason you wouldn't sign with me today? And they can say, well, I think this other agent could do it for cheaper. Boom, you got the script. Well, I think this uh, other person said they could give me more money. And we're about to talk about that. Well, you got the script. Well, I got a few more appointments with other agents. There's so many objection handlers that you need to isolate and then just go through it and, and win a listing. This, is, this whole presentation is how to win the listing, not to go on listing presentation, right? So a lot of people say, you know, thanks for meeting with me, Jace, but you know, this other agent said they can get me 300 while you only said they can get me 250, right? So what you'll want to say is, well, I can definitely appreciate how other agents haven't studied the market like I have. You see, many agents will take an overpriced listing because they want to sign in the yard. They don't really care if your house sells. They just care about marketing the sale, period. They need to make their car payment. They need to make this. They need to do this. They would love to put a sign in your yard. What I call those, what I call those agents are listing agents. They actually list the property and I actually sell properties. The reason we do that is, is just like I was explaining earlier, is we price it correctly. That's the only thing we really can't control is the price of the property. Wouldn't that make sense, right? Something like that. Go ahead. And remind them the average listing is going to bring 2.8 buyer leads, buyers. And so a lot of these people will take an overpriced Up to five buyers. Stop it. Say it. I can't take them anywhere. The, you know, the average listing will bring up to five buyer leads. So, I mean, yes, Susie might want to list your house for more, and she doesn't have the intention of, of, of selling it. She just wants to have those buyer leads. And this is a funny script. Uh, Gene Frederick told me this. If you guys have been laughing, this other person is, is funny, and you're funny, and it's just, you're having a good time in listening presentation. And then they say, well, thanks, man. Uh, but I think I'm going to try to get 300 as well. You say, well, you know, I can appreciate, you know, how that other agent hasn't studied the market like me, but that's okay. You know, I'll, I'd always like to be number two. I'd like to be a second husband. No. Oh, yeah. Firstborn, second spouse. Okay, say or that, yeah. Third realtor. Okay, oh, thank you. I, I couldn't remember that. So I'd always like to be, you know, one of three things. The firstborn, right? Your, your second spouse or your third realtor. Let me explain. You know, firstborn, every, they get everything they want. You know, your second spouse... They already knew how they, you know, maybe got divorced the first time. They're probably not going to do that to you again. So the second spouse is always, you know, it's just better. And I'd love to be your third realtor. The first realtor is going to overpromise and underdeliver, just like probably you're talking to him now. The second realtor is going to be like, okay, well, 350 didn't work. Let's drop it to 300, and they're going to try to sell it. And the third agent, you know, hopefully me, is going to actually sell the property, or right? We, or we can skip all of that and just price it. Yeah, correctly. or we can skip all of that. I'm going to market properly. You're going to get the condition excellent and we're going to price it to sell rather than you know really to even negotiate will that make sense right so at he he always says this at the bottom well put me to work and let me show you how you get the most money in the possible you know because we've all seen it as realtors but, but consumers don't realize they'll list it for overpriced and then two weeks on the market it sits there 30 days on the market there's a huge price reduction 60 days on the market and you're like if we just price it right that's too and that's okay they say sell. okay well uh, the market, you know, suggested 250 and you're going to see if you can get three. Um, will you do me a favor, uh, you know, Jace? Would you call me when they ask for a price reduction? <laughs> would you do that? And they'll be like, yeah, yeah I'll, ask. I'll call you. And they'll say, oh, well, Jeff's been 45 days. They want me to go from 300 to 275. I'm like, yeah, I'm sure she's got a couple leads now. She's probably stoked, right? Kind of get him back in that negative mindset and say, well, when you got to want to get this property sold, just let me know, man. I hate to waste any more of your time, you know, just follow up with them. So you can't really, you know, market to an active uh, listing. Right. Um, but if they say, if you say, hey, do you mind calling me, you know, when they ask you for a price reduction, that's OK. All right. I'm not I'm not calling the seller. So uh, let's move on here. Great. Yeah, we want to think it over. Right. Oh, I got to get with my wife or I'm going to talk to my husband. Again, isolate the scenario. Other than, you know, you wanting to think it over, is there any other reason you wouldn't listen with me today? Everybody's going to say, well, not really. Well, great. It's important that you make the right decision. You know, what specifically do you need to think about? Right? Leave it. Leave it alone. Isolate that too, right? Or you can say, you know, other than that, is there any other than, you know, whoops, sorry. Siri, I'm not talking to you. Siri, you're talking other than, you know, you want to think it over. Is there any other reason? Well, that's a great idea. You know, generally when sellers tell me that, it's because they have another agent that they have an appointment with. Is that the case here? And they're going to say, well, yeah. And then boom, you go back to the other, 
uh, the other script about, you know, isolating that scenario. So um, that's a pretty important decision. Sell your house. And if they do need the time, you can leave the paperwork, leave the seller's disclosure, bring value, give everything that they're going to need. That way they'll have right. it. And yeah, if you feel more comfortable, is it okay if I just leave the paperwork here and then call you tomorrow? And then maybe we can list with me. And if, you know, after you meet with those agents and you really like one, you can just kind of rip it up and we'll kind of go from there. Um, that way, you know, you don't have any pressure for me. So that's not, there's just some good ones too. A lot of times you can have the, the listing agreement mostly filled out. You'll just leave the, the price blank, but you'll go ahead and have that 6% put into there already like printed and, and everything ready. That way you right. can't change it. That's not a bad script. And again, this, you know, these aren't my scripts. These are Sean Kokoska's scripts and I give him complete credit. All my buyer scripts, uh, even though I've added some one-liners and stuff for all of Renee Sorolla, I'll give him complete credit. It's really easy to not create another, you know, will, if you will. Uh, just use what, it, I mean, success leaves clues, right? Is that what they say? There's a little joke that Renee used to say. He's, he would say, I have all the answers to the exam. Here they are. You just need to study them. And so go through and take the time and kind of memorize these and internalize them. Yeah, he would tell me that all the time. He would say... Um, here's a winning lottery ticket. I already know it's a winner, you know, cause I've sold 150 houses last year. I just need you to scratch it off. <laughs> just need you to scratch it. You know, scratch you know, which buyer scripts, seller scripts, perfecting a listing presentation, perfecting a buyer presentation. It's already going to win. So just do it. Right. So, um, we already talked about this. I don't know why that's in there, but that's a good one. Um, if they want to, you, uh, you know, talk to another agent, just isolate it and let them know, um, that you could call them and cancel those appointments for them. So um, we have we have about 15 minutes. I wanted to go over uh, what Cheryl does on a daily basis is the listing management checklist, right? We love you, Cheryl. We love you, Cheryl. <laughs> love you too. <laughs> Second coolest person I know. I'm I'm the first. Yeah. Okay. So listing management checklist. So what you're going to put in is the seller email and the seller's cell phone because you're going to want that information. You're not going to gather it when you get an offer, blah, blah, blah. Um, so post listing, right? <coughs> Sorry. Uh, prepare all listing docs, send to the seller, create the seller, in the seller information sheet. Oh, I didn't go. Yes, I did. I want to that first. And this is something you could even bring a blank one to the listing presentation to show all the stuff that you do. Right. There's something that you may leave with them. Um, you're going to want to hire a photographer, virtually stage any vacant properties, install the sign, and put the data in the MLS. Go ahead and start the MLS database stuff well before you, you get the photos and stuff. Don't just wait until you get the photos to put everything online. When we get a listing, I'll tell Cheryl, all right, he said he wants to list with me. Let's do it. And boom, this listing checklist goes into, into, you know, into existence, into, into start. So well before, maybe a week or two before we even have the pictures, everything is ready and set up in MLS. So go ahead and do that. You want to get all the disclosures and upload them, label them, et cetera, et cetera. Update the showing time. Uh, do a video tour. If you don't have a video tour, there's an uh, easy app. Uh, well, they'll put all the pictures together for you and they'll do some music and it's like a minute. And, you know, there's your video tour. Um, create the property website. It's cool being at eXp because KB Core does that right for you already, you know, but the seller doesn't know that. Um, share on social media. Go ahead and schedule the initial open house. I always like to, if, if I know the property is going to sell within like seven days, because it's like a $180,000 listing in, you know, sought after area, I'm going to tell the seller, we're going to list it on Thursday. I'm not going to have showings Thursday or Friday. And then Saturday, I'm going to do an open house and I'm going to sell your property for you. Does that sound good? And what will happen is instead of you getting you know, your, your 3%, maybe you'll get six. Maybe you'll give it to one of your agents on your team to represent the other person, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, do that. And once we do the open house and I get an offer, hopefully we're reviewing offers on Monday. That right? really does work because let's say I go on a showing and it's just me and I'm looking at the house. I get to kind of go, okay, I, I think I like the house. But if I go to an open house and there's four other families looking at it, we all want what someone else wants, right? And so you're like, oh no, they're making an offer and they're talking to the realtor and they seem interested. I better make a full price offer because four other families are interested. Right. So when, when someone comes in there, just like she said, and, there's, and they really want that house and there's 10 other buyers, guess what they're doing? They're, they're making an offer ASAP. So um, promote, just don't just talk about it. promote the listing to other brokers, your in-house brokers, promote it to outside brokers, you know, the reverse prospecting tool, 
If you guys don't know about the reverse prospecting tool, it's something that Cheryl and I use all the time. HAR, if you're a platinum member, which is, I don't know, maybe a hundred bucks more, but it's a year, will we'll show you all the agents that have sent your listing to their buyers in HAR. And you'll go to your listings and you'll click reverse prospecting and you're gonna get all their names and numbers and phone numbers and emails. So let's say you're about to do a $20,000 reduction or you just put a new roof on the house. It's super easy to go in there, click reverse prospect and start calling these people or do an email blast. Hey, thanks for sending this to your buyer. Just put a new roof on it. Would you, do you mind go selling it again this weekend? Can you do that for me? It's something you know additional. When seller sees that and you explain that, uh, that's good. You can good. also do that through showing time or I guess what CSS used to be. You can see all the showings that she used to have. And you can go back to all those agents and mass email them and say, hey, by the way, I know, you know, when you saw it, it had an old roof, but now there's a new roof. Or by the way, I know your client saw it and saw the value in it, but maybe it was overpriced. We're, we're about to do a $20,000 reduction. Yeah. So do the Tuesday updates. Cheryl does not like those, but she does those. Those are good. The Tuesday updates are for the seller. I mean, it's for seller retention. Um, when you get that you finally get a, a, a luxurious listing and you're so excited. First off, it's going to sit there forever because of the market. But uh, let's say it's 900000 and it's been 90 or 100 days. Um, they're going to be like, well, is this realtor really doing his job? Is he doing that? I doubt they're going to do that if every Tuesday you're updating them on what's been going on, what you've been doing. Hey, just wanted to let you know, you know, we didn't have any showings last week, but we've got about 50 agents that I'm marketing to that actually sent this to their buyer. Uh, so we got that going on. We have, you know, 10 um, open house guest lists. We're still marketing those. Just want to kind of keep you updated. Um, hopefully this week we'll get some more showings. If not, maybe let's talk about a price improvement to get some activity going. You know, have a good day. And that way your buyers, not, your sellers are not reaching out going, hey, is everything okay? How, how's it going? You'll say you're going to hear from me every single Tuesday because Mondays are chaotic. We, you know, Don't do Mondays, yeah. And every single Tuesday about updates and traditional showings, unless we have an offer, then you're going to hear from me before then. Right. And then they'll know to expect a phone call on Tuesday. They're not going to reach out on Monday and see how the weekend went. Yeah. So once you re re receive the offer, obviously you're going to compare it. Um, you're going to contact that buyer's lender on your offer to make sure they're legitimate, ready to go. Uh, create and calculate the net sheet for the seller just to let them know what they could expect. Um, advise the other prospects of the offer. What I would do is, hey, we just executed an offer, but if your buyers missed out or they're kind of moving slow and they want to be a backup offer, we would love to have that. Um, <clears throat> okay. And then under contract and escrow, I don't want to go over all these because well, we, we, like we five posted minutes, a contract to close. This is posted. Yeah. We, we did a separate contract to close for buyers and sellers, and it goes into detail on even like when to deposit earnest money and when option fee is due. So check that out under our Facebook Team Legacy files or in Basecamp. Yeah, so this is what you do once it's in contract. And then post-closing, the thing I want to talk about is post-closing because it's a goal of mine for every listing that I get to get three transactions for each listing. So if you want to, if your goal is to sell 25 homes, you know, this year or this, your first year in real estate, you need to know all you really need to do is get eight listings because you can get 24, 25 sales off of that. In order to get those additional sales, the, one, the first sale is going to be selling the listing, right? The second sale is going to be finding a buyer and finding them another property. And the third sale from that listing is going to be get another listing in that same area. So what you're, want, what, you're want, what you're going to want to do is follow up with the, you know, the sellers afterwards. You want to send out a just sold flyer. My just sold flyers are pretty simple. All they say is, hey, we just sold a property, you know, in less than whatever really less than less than 10 days multiple buyers missed out on it that only want to live in your subdivision um have you ever thought about selling that's going to be on the front right that's it on the back it's going to be like you know if you did sell your property where would you move to like kind of get them motivated to sell maybe well yeah if they just got three hundred thousand. shoot if we get three hundred thousand. Let's get the heck out of here and move over to Spring Branch, right? Let's, yeah, let's and, do that. and sellers are nosy. They're like, they didn't even have a nice backyard. Our backyard's way bigger. Or they right. even... Yeah, give them the address. Throw a picture <laughs> of the backyard on there. You're going to want to get uh, something uh, to them to, to, to let them reach out to you. So, um, <clears throat> sorry, follow up, a, with the, follow up a week after closing uh, and then ask for business within, you know, 30 days of closing, especially if it's a really good, um, a really good seller. You had a really good... Um, you know, selling process there. 
And then let's say that you had to, at the end of the day, you know, you overpromised them and you had to do a price correction and maybe you dropped your commission because they dropped their price and remind them when you're doing that, that's okay. Right. I'll, I, we do have it at 6%, but I couldn't sell it at 200. I got you 180 or, or I think this offer we're going to execute is 175. I'll tell you what, if you take the 175, I'll go ahead and shave off a half a point, but you just got to do me a favor and, you know, tell all your friends and family what I did for you. Right. And they're going to be like, Oh, thank you so much. You're going to, okay, great. And then after closing, remind them of that. Hey, looks like we got your property sold. That's awesome. Hope you're having fun in Spring Branch. Do you know anybody looking to buy or sell that I can help right now? Right? Ask them about that. So, um, and then put them on a seller drip campaign every six months. Talk to them. No, in five to seven years, they're going to be looking <laughs> looking to buy and sell again. But in the meantime, they'll have lots of friends so and family members. These drip campaigns need to be like you know, happy holidays, and then you know, happy birthday or whatever. Um, but in those drip campaigns, it needs to be strategic about asking for referrals. So eventually if you do it right, let's say this is your first year in real estate and you do it right, you will 100% just be working off referrals in like three or four or five years max. So do the grind and do the grind for three, four, five years and get all this stuff. And if you do it correctly in five years and after your business, whatever you plan on doing real estate, it's going to be a ton of referral business. And those are so much easier to do keep track of your database because this so, is your retirement plan that is how to win a listing i i touched on most of the stuff um do you have any questions we have about another five minutes here because i want to make sure everybody gets into the auditorium uh because we have the i conversations 